All right, three, two, one, boom. We are on live from the uh, Transparent Barrel Studios, uh, high above Boom U, and uh, you're hearing the gentle rumble off to the right of look at this, Performance PG. That's a truck down there delivering something. Performance Food Group. Oh, here we go. Look at this actual workers moving up and down the infamous Boom U alley of of work and play and debauchery. Anyway, here at uh, Boom you, I think this is dispatch, either 29, it might be 30. Uh, we're going to be live from the uh, studios of the Transparent Barrel. And this is Energy Boom 101, and I think we're going to go with dispatch 30. Now, the last dispatch, we talked about um, Dev and Energy uh, making a $6 billion, by the way. That's a B, $6 billion acquisition. Of uh, We're going to move our way in, by the way, so we can get to the maps and get to everything that's going on. It's the patented back camera pedal. Uh, it's been uh, worked on for 75 years. Now uh, the camera itself is being dropped into the Hunter, one of the most researched devices uh, ever made. And we're going to try and get a pretty good picture if we can. It's going to be tough. That'll do it right there as far as... <clears throat> Let me explain the map. <clears throat> Dead straight ahead is the USA, a map of the USA. Below it is a map of the uh, globe, and you can't really see that, which is sort of a bummer because it would be really important to show it. Uh, top right is a old phrenology chart because we're going to start uh, connecting crude to consciousness. That was uh, one of the slogans here. Uh, below that are the stock tickers. We'll keep you updated on that. And below that is a map of all the states that are in the current status of their marijuana legalization because we know that that's a part of the uh, whole energy boom. Uh, give me half a second. I'm going to turn down the radio a smidge. And if Boston comes on, you know what you'll have to do anyway. <coughs> Okay, so here we are. Now you guys can see this map pretty easy, the United States map. Uh, we talked about Dev and Energy and their lovely little play um, for Geo Southern Energy. Now Geo Southern Energy has, I can't remember how many acres they're buying, maybe 84,000? But it's in the Eagle Ford, which is a brand spanking new play. Oh, by the way, we're going to go over the Permian Basin. But anyways, the update on the Devon play, they got 84,000 acres, I think it was, in the Eagle Ford, so it's going to be primarily all crude. Um, and Devon's going to use their uh, know-how, their expertise, to unlock that. And then that will contribute to Devon's uh, revenue generation, which comes primarily from, so far, uh, the Permian Basin, where I believe they've got declined shale activity, the uh, Mississippi Lime in Oklahoma, the Woodford Shale beneath that. Uh, now they're in the Eagle Ford. Uh, I think they have, I think Devin may have land in the Neo Brara. I know they have Canadian Sands, and they used to have Tuscaloosa Marine. That said, just let me read you this update um, on the Devon deal, because this is from the Wall Street Journal, Thursday, November 21st, and this is Devon Deal, that's the Geo Southern, Devon Deal marks first step from gas to oil. We probably want to emphasize that. If the Wall Street Journal's thinking that this is the first step, for Devon from gas to oil, which is probably the second or third step, because Mississippi Lime is an oil play, and they announced that. Anyway, we're not taking issue with Rupert Murdoch here. Anyway, uh, Devon Energy Marks, step, first step from gas to oil. That should let you know that this basic uh, turnaround for Devon is just starting. Turnaround being shift. Shouldn't be turnaround. Shift from gas to oil. And uh, my call right now is that Devon's going to be a great performing stock for 2014. Uh, by the way, we, we locked them in at 60 bucks and 48 cents a share, and they're far past that now, and they'll go up and down. But um, we'll check them. We'll check them periodically and see where they are. But I bet they can really put the herd on 2014, uh, and they'll start getting this oil production. Will start coming in, and then the quarterly oil production uh, will attract the Wall Street types, and um, then the shares should move upward. But then again, GMX, I thought the same thing was going to happen. That's another story. Let's read this Devon deal. And I prompted, I talked with President Bourne, and he's going to set the bells of Boom U to let us know when we've only got a couple minutes left. But, <clears throat> while we've got time, Devon Deal marks a uh, step from gas to oil. Devon Energy said it's $6 billion purchase of a big stake in Texas Eagle Ford Shale is only the first step in a move from its natural gas roots to become a fast-growing oil company. I bet that's an understatement. Uh, by the way, this is by Tom Fowler, this article. The purchase of Geo Southern Energy Corp.'s existing wells in 82,000 acres for future drilling will increase Devon's overall output 9% next year and add 20% earnings per share, Devon said Wednesday. 
So their production's been increased 9% from this uh, acquisition. And then, I, and not only that, but I have a funny feeling Devin will have uh, plenty of uh, new places to drill on these 82,000 acres. And dare I say it, they also may have the technology to recover more than Geo Southern recovered from their initial well. So I bet Devin does really well here. And we, we'll do our best to try and dispatch a report to cover just the Eagle Ford, but that's going to be impossible. The Oklahoma City Company will sell what it considers to be its non-core businesses throughout the U.S. and Canada, including 30% of its natural gas output. So it's just selling Ford. It's got a big old chunk of natural gas output. It's selling 30% of a Ford and Ford contracts. Um, it's non-core businesses, probably like the Tuscaloosa Marine. It, 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 I don't know why it considers that non-core, but that's up to Devon. There may be some other stuff. And by the way, side note here before I finish this article. Devon doesn't need to sell a whole lot because I think they still have about 3 or $4 billion in cash offshore waiting to come back, which I'm sure is going to be part of this acquisition. We continue. Uh, investors will, and this is a quote, uh, find that the new Devon is a significant North American oil producer capable of delivering high rates of growth in high margin oil production while generating free cash flow. Chief Executive John Rachels, I'm, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure I missed it, but said in a conference call. I want to go ahead and say this again because this is pretty much what I think probably describes Devin. And uh, Larry Nichols has been running the company this way forever, and his dad ran it that way before he got it. Once again, investors will find that the new Devin, and I wouldn't call it the new Devin, I'd call it the, the, the continuing, the continuing Devin, but who am I? Uh, the new Devin is a significant North American oil producer capable of delivering high rates of growth in high margin oil production while generating free cash flow. Pretty important concepts. They all come together. That's the Devon hat trick. Remember kids, ticker symbol DVN. Now let's continue this article. Devon's shares fell two cents to close at 62.75 Wednesday. That was Wednesday from a few days ago. By the way, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it was yesterday. <clears throat> the stock jumped 5% Tuesday after the Wall Street Journal reported that the deal was in the works. Wow. <clears throat> we would have to infer that the reason the stock jumped 5% was because they announced that the deal was in the works. No one knows for sure, but that's basically what's going on here. Uh, analysts said the deal price seemed high. Huh. International Strategy and Investment Group, LLC, calculated the cost of the undrilled sites at about $34,000 an acre, while previous high water marks for Eagle Ford acres were closer to $25,000. Big deal. Um, I can assure you Devin didn't overpay. And let's look at it this way. The undrilled sites, they paid $34,000 per acre. Wait a couple years and find out what those undrilled sites are worth now per acre. I guarantee you they're worth a hell of a lot more than $34,000. Well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know. Anyway, but Devin said it knows the location and the size of the oil and the gas reservoirs at the undeveloped sites, and it's confident of their value. I wouldn't doubt them on that one. The company said it planned to drill up to 230 wells a year at the sites over the next five years. This is huge news because we're going to learn what Devin's going to do in the Mississippi line. One fourth of their Mississippi line acreage grows into Woodford Shale. Shit, I can't remember, but it's one of them. And they're committing. I think it's the Woodford Shale, by golly. I think it is. And I think they're committing to drill 300 wells per year for the next three years. And that's the Woodford Shale in Oklahoma. That's Devin. Now Devin's telling me, in addition to that, they're going to drill 230 wells a year for the next five years in Eagle Forge. So you can see where their investment. Um, time frames are going. Woodford Shale, three years out, 300 per year. Eagle Ford, five years out, 230 per year. Um, and that's just two of their plays. Uh, and I'd love to see Devin uncorking it, because uh, I really do think they're going to end up being just a stellar, stellar energy company um, in, every, in every fashion, let alone as an investment. That's one way to look at it, but there's other returns on your money aside from financial. Um, and uh, maybe there are, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Devin will use cash and short-term borrowing. Well, they don't, okay, short-term borrowing. They don't need to borrow much. The cash they're going to use, well, we'll get to it here. Uh, to finance the Eagle Ford purchase from closely held Geo Southern, which is based in the Woodlands in Texas, by the way, the most tragically hip uh, energy uh, area in the United States, the Woodlands. We'll show you ads from the Wall Street Journal that are wicked. Um, Devin this year moved $2 billion in cash it held overseas back to the U.S., and plans to bring back another $2 billion by year end. Ah, good. So we know they had $4 billion in cash. They brought back two earlier. They're bringing back two more by the year end. That'll probably go toward this purchase. Uh, the Geo Southern purchase is the second move in the past month by Devon that will significantly alter its future, said Robert Christensen, an analyst with Canaccord 
Ingenuity. Ingenuity. I think we were talking about this a month ago. Uh, the company late last month unveiled a plan to combine its pipelines. We told you about that. Most companies do a spin-off of their pipelines. Devin did a combination with Crosstex Energy. The market loved it. Um, probably a testament to how uh, intelligent Devin is. Uh, the company late last month unveiled a plan to combine its pipelines, processing plants. By the way, do you know that Devon has some, they own some fractionators somewhere in Louisiana, I think. Pretty interesting. Pretty, pretty damn amazing company. Uh, uh, processing plants, rail terminals, they have rail terminals, and other infrastructure uh, with Crosstex Energy uh, to form a publicly traded master limited partnership. That's, they bundle up all of their assets that are considered midstream. And they put that out there, and the market values that, and they, they value it higher than if they were st it was sitting in Devin's stomach because they understand it better. So you uh, you take your house and you and you take some of the furniture outside and you show the folks, and they see that it has more value than when it was sitting inside. That's sort of what goes on here, sort of. But I really don't know, and you should never listen to what I have to say. Although there's an interesting story about the herbal life, which is a great thing we have to get to. If we have time, I haven't heard the bells of boom. You, I've got to do a time check just to see where we are. We've got plenty of time. We're only at 11 minutes. Watch this. Okay, so we can finish on Devin. Um, Devin, Chief, Chief Financial Officer, Jeff Agosta, Jeff Agosta or Augusta, I apologize, Jeff Agosta or Augusta, by the way, I feel good about at least Jeff, said that a transportation business Devin is acquiring from Geo Southern, including an expanded terminal to ship oil and other liquids by barge from the Port of Victoria southwest of Houston. They're there, the bells would be a good candidate for a sale to the Crosstex partnership. They're sort of telling you what's going on. The Bells of Boom U are coming in. The last time I tried to riff on the Bells of Boom U, something crazy happened. So guess what? I want to riff on them again and prove, I can't prove, but at least I can offer that one, one bell, I'm not going to riff on it. I'm just going to count them two. I don't even know how many we have. Probably three. We know this for sure. Four, sure. You don't, five, you don't ask for whom these bells toll. Six. Would this be considered disrespectful? Seven. And then uh, I know we've got an eight. So don't ask for whom the bells of boom you toll. Fit that in. There's nine. That should be it. What we're now going to get probably is a nice little um, bit of music. In the meantime, uh, we finished up with Devin. There they are. It's unbelievable. Um, by the way, a hat trick is if the bells of boom you go off. While Boston's playing on the radio, while a train is coming by. Now, the good news is that'll happen eventually. It has to. You know, there's three things that happen. Eventually, they'll all cross paths somewhere. And it'll look like it was some incredible event. And maybe it was or maybe it wasn't. That's all. That's sort of the point of the show is the absurdity that we lay on top of the actual real information right here in the Wall Street Journal. Devin Deal marks first step from gas to oil. The bells of Boom U in the background. Devin uh, has a significant presence here at, at Boom U. Um, we'd love to talk more about him. There's tons of stuff to talk about. We'll have to do a few more dispatches. Uh, we'll probably wrap this one up with this bell of Boom U. Although I have time to tell you about the Herbalife fight, and you'll want to read up about this. But basically, there's a bunch of guys that are all a bunch of big hedge fund guys are all taking sides on what's going to happen with Herbalife. And it's basically everyone else against this fella, um, Bill Ackman. And he placed a big bet. And um, everyone else, including Carl Icahn, George Soros, and this latest fellow, William P. Sturitz from Pulse Holdings, have gone against um, <coughs> Mr. Ackman. And it's going to be really interesting because here's a great little strategy. In October, Mr. Ackman announced he was restructuring his bet against the company to mitigate risk, reducing the amount of stock he had sold short. He shorted the shit out of Herbalife. And he's reducing the amount of stock he sold short by more than 40% and replacing it with long-term derivatives. Now, here's the good news. I don't even know what the hell any of that means. Other than I can tell you that he, he reduced his amount of uh, short shares 40%, and he's replacing that same leverage bet with long-term derivatives, how, how that works, I don't know, but he's still locked into his bet, so there's still good drama out there with Herbalife. And i got to tell you, for some funny reason, I sort of hope he wins the damn thing. Anyway, we're going to shut this down. This was dispatched 29 or 30. We'll call it 30. Big follow-up story on the previous one on Devin. They're looking good and only getting better. It's the $6 billion shift into second gear, and um, the next dispatch, uh, there's, oh, we'll talk about the Permian Oil Basin. 3, 2, 1, boom. See you.